So George Washington is getting nervous. He's been fighting for years and years, hasn't really picked up a ton of momentum, and he needs a miracle. He needs a knockout punch to win the war. He's about to get it with a little help from this guy. Wait, what? Most people know the Marquis de Lafayette, hero of the American Revolution, but this guy, James Armistead, he's the unknown hero of the American Revolution. This is the story of how an enslaved double agent spy named James Armistead helped George Washington and his Continental Army win the Battle of Yorktown and gain American independence. By the way, guys, if you enjoy these videos, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe, share it with friends. I appreciate all the support. Uh, we're gonna start today's video in December of 1778. Up until this point, most of the fighting has been taking place in the middle and the north colonies, and really neither side has gained a huge advantage, right? It's kind of a draw, and everyone's getting frustrated. So the British decide they're gonna shift their strategy, they're gonna change their focus, and they're gonna start focusing on the south, where you know they felt there were more colonists who were still loyal to the British crown. So they figure, look, if we can shift our focus to the south, we rack up a bunch of victories, uh, we can gain momentum and win the war. And they're gonna start with Georgia, which by the way, if you'll remember, Georgia was the only colony that didn't send a single representative to the First Continental Congress, right? Because they were still kind of loyal to the British. So the British start this Southern strategy in Georgia and they easily capture the capital city of Georgia in the Battle of Savannah. And then they roll into South Carolina where they capture the capital city of South Carolina in the siege of Charleston. By the way, this, this Battle of Charleston is gonna be one of the worst defeats for the Americans of the entire war. I mean, 5,500 men captured. It's just, it's a huge disaster for the Americans. Then the British keep rolling, right? Just a few months later, they have another smashing victory at the Battle of Camden. So you've got Savannah, you've got Charleston, you've got Camden, right? Then they shift their focus to Virginia. This is the biggest, most populated, um, probably most important, colony in the Americas, right? Home of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, Patrick Henry. So the British now focus on Virginia. They start ripping through Virginia and they burn down the entire capital city of Richmond. This is a huge embarrassment for uh, the Continental Army and for George Washington, right? Number one, because it's the capital of Virginia. And number two, because the guy leading the British used to be one of George Washington's top commanders, a guy named Benedict Arnold. And so Washington is in New York, right, at the time, and he's hearing news of all these battles and the Southern strategy, and he's like, oh God, I mean, we, something needs to happen or we're doomed. And so he writes to a friend saying, we are at the end of our tether, and that now or never, our deliverance must come. And so, you know, Washington's actually about to get lucky because around that time, there's a slave in Virginia named James Armistead who gets permission from his master to volunteer for the Continental Army. So he volunteers for the army and he starts working for Marquis de Lafayette. And the Marquis de Lafayette is like, wait a second, this, this, uh, this James Armistead guy, he's, he's smart, he can read, he can write, he'll make the perfect spy. So he sends James into the British camp as a spy, pretending to be a runaway slave, right? And James starts working for Benedict Arnold and for General Charles Cornwallis, like two of the top dogs in the British army. And while he's serving these guys, he's seeing things and he's hearing things and he's reading things and he's getting all this information, which he then writes down in these written reports, which he passes along to other slaves and it makes its way back to the Continental Army. Now around this time, um, Cornwallis, General Cornwallis, is also you know, sort of planning a knockout punch of his own. And so he decides to move 7,000 men into Yorktown, Virginia, surrounded by water. And he figures, okay, I'm gonna hang out there and wait for the British Navy to bring me um, you know, food, supplies, and more men, reinforcements, so that they can just go on a rampage, right? And deliver a knockout punch and win the war. 
Now, what Cornwallis doesn't realize is that he's got a big, big problem because James Armistead has been feeding all of this information to the Americans. So they know where Cornwallis is, they know exactly what he's up to. And also, just by pure luck, uh, the Americans have 28 French warships that are in the West Indies and they're ready to be used for anything George Washington wants, right? So they could be used to go up the coast and trap Cornwallis in uh, Yorktown and, and basically crush Cornwallis's men and deliver that knockout punch. Now, George Washington isn't convinced. He's looking at all this stuff and he's like, well, you know what? I think I want those warships to go all the way up to New York because he's obsessed with capturing New York. Now, there's a French commander with Washington up in New York named the Comte de Rochambeau. And he's the commander in chief of all French forces in the Americas, right? And he's like, Washington, you are killing me, man. This is our knockout punch. This is our opportunity. Let's send the warships to Yorktown. Let's trap Cornwallis. Let's put an end to this thing. And Washington, you know, Washington's not convinced. And so Rochambeau does something that he really shouldn't do. He's, he's way more experienced than George Washington, but he has orders to follow Washington's you know, instructions, right? So he's waiting and waiting. And finally, he's like, you know what? We can't pass this opportunity up. He sends a secret message to the uh, French naval commander down in the West Indies to send all the ships to Yorktown. Then he's like, uh, hey, George, you know, I kind of sent the message to go to, York, to Yorktown already. And Washington's like, all right, fine. You know, it's not, it's not that big a deal. He's not upset. And Washington, and, and Washington make their way down from New York to Yorktown for this, you know, what, what may be a sort of massive final battle. By the time Washington and Rochambeau arrive at Yorktown, the French Navy has done the unthinkable. They beat the British Navy. They've trapped Cornwallis in. And so uh, Washington and Rochambeau, they oversee a, a, a you know, beautiful military operation, which is mostly done by French military engineers, where they design this series of trenches and cannons to just bombard Cornwallis, just blast him into oblivion until he... Uh, until he surrenders, which eventually he does. And when Cornwallis surrenders, he, he walks into Lafayette's tent to formally surrender in person. And he is absolutely shocked to see his personal servant, James Armistead, standing inside the tent next to Lafayette. And he's like, my God, now I understand how we were beaten so badly. Now, supposedly, uh, he looks at uh, James Armistead and says, ah, you rogue, then you have been playing me a trick all this time. So after the war, James Armistead is rewarded by going back to being a slave. Yeah, he goes back to being a slave for a bunch of years because Virginia, they decided to free all uh, uh, slaves who fought in the war. But Armistead technically didn't fight, right? He was a spy, not a soldier. So he didn't qualify no freedom for you. Now he's stuck as a slave for a bunch of years and he's begging the Virginia legislature, hey, come on guys, I, you know, I really helped out. Uh, give me my freedom, but they don't. Eventually the Marquis de Lafayette writes a letter, this letter, um, basically saying, look, James Armistead was my man. He, he supported our, our efforts. He played a key role and he deserves his freedom. He says, uh, James has done essential services for me and uh, he says he appears to me entitled to every reward his situation can admit of. And eventually James gets his freedom and his very first act as a free man is to change his name to James Armistead Lafayette in honor of his old friend who helped him gain his freedom.